The NBA playoffs are the pinnacle of basketball. This is where legends are made, history is written, and stars are born. It's about to go to work. Bumping, shoving, spinning, firing, double, and it! Unfortunately, it's also a time when controversy often takes the center stage. Donchett's upset, has something to say, Westbrook pushes him. Sports gambling, questionable referees, and crafted narratives. If there ever was a time the darker side of the NBA shows up, it's during the playoffs. And this year has been no exception. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been deeply immersed in the NBA this postseason, watching game after game after game every single day. And in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly why fans around the world suspect the playoffs might be rigged. Him and said, What did I do? He just dunked it. He's what done that. What did he do? Oh, they threw Jokic out of the game. I think they're throwing Jokic out of the game. This is a panel of ESPN analysis, and as you can see, they're breaking down game one of the Knicks versus Pacer series. The big question on the table is how much of a factor did officiating play in the game? Well, Jay Williams, who was the number two overall pick back in 2002, believes the Pacers got absolutely robbed. Uh, Rick Carlisle won't say it, but I'll say it. Yeah, good. Indiana got robbed. They got robbed of a moment. They got robbed of a moment. If you're curious about what Jay Williams meant by the Pacers getting robbed, let me break down exactly what happened so you can make up your own mind. So with just under a minute left on the clock and the score tied up at 115, Brunson went for a pocket pass to DiVincenzo. However, Aaron Nesmith got in the way, intercepting it with his right hand. It might be a bit tricky to catch from this angle, but if you slow down the video, you'll definitely conclude that it bounces off his hand. However, the ref, who was positioned behind the play and who didn't have the best view, decided to call it a kickball. The Pacers players couldn't believe it. I mean, it was a crucial moment in the game, and an incorrect whistle was about to completely shift the momentum. What I mean is that, if the ref hadn't botched this call, the Pacers would have likely had a 4-on-2 fast break going the other way. Instead, the Knicks regained possession due to the referee's decision, leading to a DiVincenzo three-pointer that put the Knicks ahead 118-115. to It was a five-point swing. The other moment that's causing NBA fans to say this game was rigged happened when there was just a little under 15 seconds left on the game clock. During this pivotal play, Halliburton, with the ball in his hands, was leading the charge, ready to execute a move as Miles Turner set the screen on DiVincenzo. However, to the disbelief of fans around the world, the referee blew the whistle, calling Turner for an illegal screen. Point at Madison Square Garden, and Turner will be called for an offensive foul on the screen. Now, it was technically the correct call since Turner was moving, but at the same time, it was a horrible call. The heart of the matter is that this call was so weak, especially given the fact that this was a playoff game. As one fan commented, this is the equivalent of a cop pulling you over for going 32 in a 30. <laughs> in the clutch moments of playoff games, calls like this shouldn't be made. It's absolutely absurd. Another issue here is that DiVincenzo had just pulled off a screen that was even more obviously illegal just moments ago. You remember that kickball, right? Well, this happened just a split second before that. Check out DiVincenzo's screen here. He not only moves into Nesmith, but also hooks his arm into him. And yet the refs didn't call anything, turning a blind eye to the obvious foul. As a result, fans are seriously questioning the fairness of the calls. And well, this headline really captures the feelings of many NBA fans online. And they've got a point. In the critical moments of this game, it felt like the calls heavily favored the Knicks, almost to the extent that it seemed the game was rigged. Adding to the suspicion of the game being fixed, when the score was tied 66-66, to there was a play where Jalen Brunson clearly made body contact with Miles Turner. Initially ruled a foul, the Knicks challenged it and surprisingly won. Yeah. Like, how in the world is this not a foul on Brunson? Even the commentators were baffled by the turn of events. Wow. Wow is right. I have no idea what's going on with these replays in the playoffs. 
Drugs Brunson jumps sideways into Turner, hits him hard with the body, and that's not a foul, I guess. One more thing that's really puzzling to me are fouls like these. Didn't the NBA claim they'd crack down on these non-basketball moves used to draw fouls? Yet Brunson practically lived at the line with them. He's going to go to the line again. He's got Nemhard up in the air. Anyway, when you tally it all up, this game seemed highly suspicious, and it's just one glaring example why fans feel the NBA is rigging the playoffs. Another instance is Game 1 of the Timberwolves vs. Nuggets series, which further fueled the belief that the referees have an agenda. Alright, so it started off with this moment where Edwards smoothly got past Jackson for the bucket. Everything at that point seemed fine, there was no tension, just a tiny stare down, no words exchanged. But somehow, Edwards got hit with a technical foul for that. <laughs> The call was so bad that the commentators immediately jumped on it. Soda. Oh, come on, man. No, no, no way. No, no way. way. No, no Courtney. Way. No, Courtney. I'm sorry. Man, we're in the second round of the playoffs. Emotions are always going to be high. Here's the move by Anthony Edwards. Man, you got to... That's just a look. Come on. That's a bad technical. Anyway, it was a bad technical, but according to the NBA rulebook, you could get a technical for that. But here's the thing, in the very next game, Nuggets head coach Michael Malone got heated about a play and went right up to one of the officials, yelling and probably dropping more than a few choice words. But guess what? Nothing happened. No technicals, nothing at all. So here's where NBA fans are scratching their heads and feeling like the refs are favoring the Nuggets. Why does Ant-Man get slapped with a technical for something like this, while Mike Malone gets away with a heated confrontation with no repercussions at all? It just doesn't add up. Another issue NBA fans are upset about is the incident where Jamal Murray threw a heat pack onto the court during a live play. This was incredibly dangerous, and if a player had slipped on it, it could have resulted in a serious injury. What's even more unbelievable is that earlier, Jamal Murray had thrown a towel onto the floor as well. Now, considering similar incidents, like Steph Curry getting ejected for throwing his mouthpiece, you'd expect that this would at least result in a one-game suspension. But instead, Jamal Murray only gets hit with a $100,000 fine. I mean, if that had been Draymond Green, for instance, he'd probably be facing another indefinite suspension because of it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm relieved that Murray didn't get suspended for that, as it would have tarnished an otherwise great series. But at the same time, the inconsistencies in the league's rule are becoming a bit too much to ignore. Moving on, there's a couple moments that really make you stop and pause. But first, let me ask you this. If one team doesn't even get a single free throw in a whole half while the other team shoots 11, would you start to wonder what's going on here? And yet, that's exactly what went down in Game 1 of the Lakers vs. Nuggets series. Despite taking plenty of shots in the paint in the second half, the refs didn't even blow the whistle once to send the Nuggets to the line. Another strange occurrence was in Game 5 of that series. Despite out-rebounding the Lakers 45-41 and attempting a similar number of shots from beyond the arc, the Los Angeles Lakers ended up shooting three times as many free throws as the Nuggets. Next up, I'll be honest, I didn't catch much of the Heat and Celtics series. There was just too many games to keep up with, and with Jimmy sidelined, it felt a bit anticlimactic. But when I checked in on how Heat fans were feeling after the game got sent back into Cancun, it was like, these refs are surely being paid under the table. So after seeing sediments like this, I decided to dive into the numbers a bit, because while they don't tell the whole story, they do paint a picture. The Miami Heat attempted a total of 173 pointers while the Celtics attempted 195. Now, the reason I bring up three point shots is because this is the main argument Lakers fans use against the Warriors when it comes to free throws. They claim the reason the Lakers get so many more free throws is because the Warriors rely heavily on jump shots. And yet, check this out. Even though the Celtics took more shots from long range than the Heat, when it came to free throws, the Celtics took 103 attempts, while the Heats only took 60. That's almost twice as many. Whether the games are influenced by an NBA storyline or by sports betting is uncertain, but one thing is clear. 
there's a lot of suspicion surrounding them. Considering a past incident where an NBA referee was caught manipulating games and another recent incident where an NBA player was found betting on his own matches, it only deepens the suspicion and begs the question, how much influence do external factors have on the integrity of the NBA playoffs? Maybe I'll do a further investigation when the NBA playoffs conclude, but in the meantime, despite having the refs against him, Anthony Edwards is putting on a show that we haven't seen since the likes of Jordan himself. In fact, he's been putting on such a show that people are straight up dubbing him the next Michael Jordan. And if you're curious about why exactly people are slapping him with that title, you gotta check out this video where I break down the whole story.